So as Kiki was, was saying, in 11, we introduced our new dynamic system. Um, Lightwave already had a dynamic system, you know, the cloud effect stuff and rigid uh, stuff. And it was working quite fine because we've seen a lot of uh, visual effects made with that. But we really needed some, uh, something that could be you know, working in real time, that could be uh, precise above all. So let's take a look at what we have now in 11 too. Um, I'm going to load Modeler and an object that I prepared. I want to give a demonstration of the Fracture tool that we have in Lightway. We can break things, yes. We, as a 3D artist, I like to, you know, to break things and make bridge collapse and things like that. And let's see how easy it is to do this in Lightweight. So, uh, in layer one, I have a simple ground plane, a ball in the second, and an object I'm going to destroy in the third layer. What I can do is to use the fracture tool in Modeler and select the explode part so I can see the final result and use the Voronoi algorithm. So I press OK and I get this result. My, my object is in pieces. Let me get rid of some stuff. OK. So I can finally save my object and send it to layout. So here we have, let's go in that's a wireframe so I can see my selection. We have this object, which is the one that have generated the fracture one, so I don't need it for now. This ball and the fracture. So this ground plane is going to become a static body. It's not moving, it's just colliding with all the other dynamic objects. This ball is going to become a kinematic body. I want to be able to animate it. So a static body uh, has to stay in place for all the time during the simulation. A, a kinematic body can be animated and react anyway with collisions with other objects. And of course, I'm going to set this uh, fracture object as a parts body. What's going to light? Well, well, normally in other softwares where you find the same functionality, you have to distribute your pieces one for each layer. That makes the scene really, you know, hard to look at, complex. Here we have everything in one layer, and that makes things really easier. Um, so if I press play, that's what I get. I get a simulation of the object breaking. Of course, we can tweak it a little bit. Um, we can approximate this to a box and give some collision merging. This, of course, to a ball, to a sphere. Collision merging even in this case. And why not give some collision merging to this one? So we can rerun the simulation and get this kind of stuff. As you can see now, the, the object is completely fracturing. All the pieces are falling apart. But we have uh, great control on it. And we can, for example, use the glue strength to keep the pieces together. That's what is going to happen now. It's acting like almost like a soft body, but it isn't, of course. And it's falling down. Of course, we can specify. Uh, we have several rules we can use to specify when the object has to break in pieces. And in this case, I'm going to use the breaking angle. So. As the pieces are, uh, reach uh, a breaking angle, which I can specify, they break in pieces. So now it's set at 5 uh, degrees. And you can see that not all the pieces are breaking, but only the ones that are bending over this, the, the ball in this case. Of course, uh, in, uh, decreasing this, this value is going to make my object less resistant to breakage, and this is what, what's happening now. Again, it's breaking in a lot of pieces. Let's try a different thing. Let's just move this object 
a little more toward the border I can disable dynamics so it's going to collapse here on this corner reload the situation restart the, the, the simulation okay I need more I need to tweak the breaking angle here like probably three is going to break it the right way not yet I can do another thing I can raise it up make it go down from a higher distance and this is very probably going to break it exactly where I want it to break of course you can use weight maps you can use procedural textures you can use image maps to control all this this value the glue strength value the breaking angle and we have no problem to you know duplicate this object and restart the simulation we can even activate VPR I'm going to do that so now we have these objects interacting let me okay let's start the simulation now okay so what is cool is of course I can see this stuff in VPR uh, now I have just one light in the scene which of course I can rotate it's very dark what I can do is to activate the gradient backdrop and activate VPR and enable radiosity here oh that's okay I don't need the draft mode on so now we have GI uh, in the scene and I can still you know play the scene and see what happens of course I can freeze the situation let VPR refine the scene so this is what you know this is this makes it really easy to create your own choreography when you are working on a distraction uh, shot where you have to make a building collapse or things like that let's take a look at soft body because with Lightwave 11.5 we're introducing Lightwave uh, bullet soft body in Lightwave um, okay I'm going to show you a scene okay in this case we have several stuff in the scene we have okay the, the, the back the this ground plane object three uh, spheres that are just rigid objects and several clothes I want you to demo how, how fast and precise can be to simulate now soft bodies with self collision interacting so now producing uh, a shot with your character that has a cloth and multiple clothes overlapping well that's no not a problem anymore you can do that finally you of course can um, tweak the precision you need re in relation to, to the shot you're working on so this is pretty cool of course I can uh, animate this let's see this is a kinematic body so yes I can animate it and I can you know make it go up and why not this too I don't I don't know what what's going to happen precisely but we'll verify it just pressing play here so now we have interaction between soft body, rigid body, static body, everything is interacting in the right way. Of course now I'm calculating the, the simulation, which is, I mean, a pretty complex simulation with a lot of soft bodies. And as it's calculated, I can just press play and see the result in real time. Even in this case, of course, I can activate VPR and why not do the same I've done before with the gradient and some radiosity stuff to improve the simulation I can even select this surface with shift left mouse button and add why not some reflection well that's a bit too much and let's see it in real time with light it's pretty easy to take a look at the final result you're working on you're not working blind and that's a big thing so about soft body soft body are not just clothes or uh, 
balls, soft, soft balls and things like that. So body can be part of characters. In Lightweight 11.5, we have introduced a way to make parts of your characters soft and to control them in a very precise way. I'm going to show you that with this scene I have prepared. Let's, let's try this scene. Scenes. Okay. Okay, in this scene I have an object with no bones, no morphs, nothing. Just the plain object animated on the y-axis during this movement. If I press play, let's go full screen. That's what I'm getting. All the secondary, this is a whole secondary animation. And this has been done, has been uh, tweaked using just soft bodies. So we have the object moving and the soft body are doing the rest. Even in this case, I can activate VPR. Take a look at this scene with some fog. And we can play it almost in real time, which is pretty cool. And again, if I show you the settings here of this, of this soft body, you can see that if I disable dynamic, this is what we get. So this is our very simple initial animation. With, thanks to a wave map, which you can create really, really uh, quickly in layout, we can define what of this object is going to be soft. So in this case, everything is soft, but some points I kept free from the weight map. Those are driving the whole motion of the object while the rest is reacting dynamically using the bullet soft body dynamics, which is pretty cool. So this is a pretty uh, simple example, but the final result is, I mean, it's what you see. It's something really interesting. You can even go in texture shaded. You see this up in GL like that. But now let's see uh, a more complex character. 